And that one. I know, I know, I know. Ta -da. Okay, hello and welcome to a short video guide on how to carry out a titration aimed predominantly at key stage four science pupils. So I'm Mr. Wilkes, this is Ms. Davis. Hello. And we're going to just talk you through a few basic questions that you might have when dealing with things like titration. So, question number one, Ms. Davis, what is a titration? Well, a titration is a practical method, as you can see, and it's to find out the concentration of an unknown solution. And we do this by adding certain amounts of acid with certain amounts of alkali using a very special setup. Brilliant, awesome. Um, what would you say that titrations are mostly used for in chemistry? Um, some of the common examples that you guys will come across in junior GCSEs will be things like making fertilisers, um, finding out vitamin C concentrations, like I've already said, finding out the concentration of an unknown solution, like an acid or an alkali. And we also use it for finding out the percentage of alcohol in a particular drink, and even to find out the length of the fatty acid chain when we're making soap. Brilliant, amazing. I hope you took all of that in. I have. All right, well, we're going to try one. We're going to try and have a go at one. So uh, I'm going to be your assistant. All okay, right, so. so basically the first thing we need to know about titration is the practical equipment that we're going to need to know. This is the main piece of equipment that you need for your uh, uh, titration. It is called a burette. Um, it's a piece of glassware. It's got a tap at the bottom which you can open and close again. And it measures up to 50 centimetres cubed. We keep this burette in our plant stand. So what's, do we know why we use a different kind of stand? Like perhaps for like when we do physics experiments, if we're metal quite bulky, is there a reason why we go for these kind of typical wooden ones? It's all just safety of not squeezing the glass too much. And, yeah, normally yeah. Um, the metal ones obviously don't have the, the shape that these wooden oh, shapes do. They have a yeah. cylindrical shape, so it fits onto the burette quite nicely, whereas the metal ones sort of have forks, so um, it can slip through. And obviously if it lands on the desk with this pointed end, it will break. And they're quite expensive to replace. I've always noticed as well when doing this as well as an experiment with my groups is that we always tend to fill this up, I'm sure the stairs will show you how in a moment, and there's always a situation where the tap's yeah. always open. Every time. And every time, and it always floods out. So, you know, really important point, just check that that tap is closed, you know, really make sure that it's, you know, I guess you could say the horizontal way. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's stuck. Brilliant. So, the next thing you're going to need is the white tile, and you'll see why in a minute, because uh, titration is all about colour change, and if you have it on the background that isn't white have this white tile, you're not going to see that colour change very well, so we need a white tile. You then have a conical flask, normally 250ml con conical flask, so you can fit all your solution in. The reason we have a conical flask and not, and not a beaker, as, as you'll see, when we do a titration, we need to swirl constantly so that all the reactants are reacting together. And if we do it in a beaker and we swirl, the solution will go everywhere, so we use a 250ml conical flask. You then need uh, an indicator. We're going to be using something called phenylphalanine. This is a single indicator and gives a really clear colour change uh, when our titration has finished. That's why we don't use things such as universal indicator because it's got a whole range of colours and we don't want that. We want one colour change. We then need this. This is called um, a bulb pipette and this is a very accurate way of measuring, measuring out 25 centimetre cubed of solution. You could use a measuring cylinder, but it's not as accurate as using this 25ml bulb pipette. And in order to suck up the solution, you need a pipette filler. This is really, really important. When you connect these two pieces of equipment, you must hold the bulb pipette at the top. If you hold it down here and then try to insert, because it's quite difficult, this can snap. And if it's sharp and it hits your wrists, you're going to have an accident. You still hold it at the top. And at the bottom, you insert, you just twist, a bit of force, but not too much. You want to try and make it as airtight as possible. That's your bulb pipette. By far the coolest piece of science equipment I've ever seen in chemistry in a while. I love that. <laughs> you then need two different solutions. Today we're going to be using sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, and we're going to be reacting these together until we hit a neutral solution. So that's the aim of our titration. We want to know exactly how much of each solution is needed to reach a neutral point. So we're going to do the titration now. So that's we're putting an acid and an alkali together. An acid and a base, really, because a base. base is a soluble alkali. So, that's so sodium hydroxide is the base, corrosive, very dangerous, and our hydrochloric acid is an irritant, so maybe skin itchy. That's why we're wearing goggles, safety first. Okay, what I've done for ease is I've dispensed some of the solution into a beaker and labelled it. First trick, we need to get our burette out of the camp stand. The reason is we're going to fill this burette up now. 
there's zero line at eye level. If you put it up here, because I'm pretty short, I'm not going to be able to see. And if you're taller, you're not going to be able to see either. So if you take it out, make sure that tap is closed, like Sarah was saying, and you have the zero line at eye level. You then get a mini little funnel. And you get the um, we're going to the reason we're not putting the, the basin is because it forms um, like a white scum. And what happens is that it gets left in the tap and it blocks it all up. So we're going to put the acid in. All right. Pour slowly because this funnel gets clogged up. Okay, and just fill it up until you're at the zero line. Steady hands more professional rounds like this. That's the way it's right. When you <laughs> hit the top, don't quite go all the way to the zero. What you want then to get is a little pipette. The reason being is that in any solution, this is something called a meniscus. If you look very carefully, there's a little semicircle. Can oh, you see it's it? just like a little, yeah. It's almost like a little convex lens just at the top. Absolutely. You want the bottom of that meniscus to lie on the zero line. So to make sure we don't add too much or too little, I'm going to slow down that adding and do it drop by drop until the bottom of that meniscus is at the zero line. Do it drop by drop nice and slowly. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. All right. Now we can put that back into the plastic. Now I'm going to use this cool piece of equipment. This is our uh, bowl pipette. It has got a little dial here. And if you dial that up, what happen what's happening is that you're sucking solution into this bowl pipette. And up here there's a little line which tells you when you hit 25 centimetre cubed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my sodium hydroxide, put the end of the bulb pet in, and I'm just going to turn this dial, and it goes up pretty quickly until you hit the bulb, then it goes more slowly. Yeah, that's a good job. It's almost pushing all the air pressure out of the way, isn't it? It's Absolutely. And then when you hit the top of the bulb, slow down, because the line is very close to it, and it will shoot up very, very quickly. And again, if you need to come down so you can see where the meniscus is. And then the next thing you do is you put it into your conical flask. And the quickest way to do it is by pushing this plunger down. Or you can press this light lever and it allows all that pressure out. Okay. Or, alternatively, you can take this off. And it should all fall out. So you just leave it drained. It takes a bit of time, but you just leave it drained. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to add our indicator to our conical flask. So, have you got any predictions of what colour we're going? Um, orange, pink, purple. Orange or pink or purple, alright. So I'm, I'm hoping it's something dramatic. So it's something dramatic, so. maybe, maybe. <laughs> so we're going to be adding phenylcholamine to our base. Okay, we'll see a little bit left over. There's no reason to get rid of that. Okay, just leave it in there. You then take this ball to pet and you put it somewhere where it cannot roll off the desk. Take your phenolphthalein and you need to just add, quite literally, two or three drops. If you add too much, then you're not going to see the titration that you want to. So you want to. Oh, look at that. Okay, That's so crazy. it's gone. Give wow. it a good swirl. It's gone it's a nice pink. pink pinky purple. Yeah. Right, so now we're going to need some teamwork. All right. Okay, so the third one needs to help me. Yeah. This crunkle class needs swirling. Okay. Good swirl all the time. Yeah. Right. Can I, can I be a swirler? You can be the swirler. Okay. Sir's going to have to do two jobs at once. I, oh, no. I'm going to be in charge of the tap. Now, what's going to happen is when this solution neutralises, so when the acid and the base neutralise, this indicator will suddenly turn colourless, just like that. So we're in a base, it's pink, and when it hits neutral, it's colourless. If we add too much acid, it will go white. So colourless is the, the point we need. Okay. So Sarah's going to swirl constantly okay. and tell me immediately when it goes colourless. So should I stop swirling at the moment that I think that it's... No, it's keep going. swirling okay. because sometimes okay. it uh, fades sure. off. So okay. I'm going to open the tap fully okay. for the initial bit. Okay, this would be our rough titra. This is the first one that you do and it normally gives you a rough indication of how much acid we're going to need to neutralise our base. Okay, now we've added about 20. I'm going to close the tap, give it a good swirl, yep. and we're going to open the tap a more slowly. So we can add a little bit, drop by drop. 
So I've added 25 ml oh. of sodium hydroxide. Almost seems as if it's going to go, doesn't it, each time? You can get a little point. And the best treatment of titration is to be as patient as you can. Then you're always going to get the most accurate results. And remember, accurate is when it's close to its true value, so when we're actually getting it scientifically correct. And you can see it's beginning to go a little. The pink isn't there as much. It's not going to take very many more drops. I'm doing it drop by drop. Oh, there we go. And there wow. you go. So it's gone literally. Fantastic. It was pink, and four drops later, it's turned colourless. So we had 25 ml of base in the front of the flask. We started with 50 ml of acid. This has gone down to 23.4 ml of yep, acid. So it took 23.4 ml of acid to neutralize 25 ml of the sodium hydroxide. I don't know if you can see it, I'll just kind of bring that a bit closer to some of the cameras as well. It really has gone clear as well. We completely lost that pink color as well. So there's, you know, one of those great questions in key stage three and four science. How do you know when a chemical reaction is taking place? Oh, look at that. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's a classic, it really is. You're then thinking, well, what do we do with this solution? Well, if we're going to make a fertilizer, and this crops up quite mm. a lot in the new C2 course, um, well, what you need to do is you will need to, first of all, evaporate this off, because there's quite a lot of water in it. So you evaporate it off, and you get left with dry crystals. You then have to filter these crystals to make sure there's no moisture left in it as, um, at all. So you've got these dry crystals might seem a bit counterintuitive, but we then need to wash them with water to get rid of any impurities. Once you've washed them, you dry them again, and then you're left with pure crystals, and they'll be salt because it's an acid plus a base, and that makes a salt. Brilliant. And I know as well, I've been teaching this as well this year, we always seem to pop up with the same kind of bases and same kind of acids as well, and things like sodium hydroxide always seems to creep up. You know, sometimes it's just a one mark question, you know, on a chemistry paper, or in a, in a more lengthy style of the question where they ask you to describe, you know, why they would choose to use, you know, such and such a base, or, you know, what happens to the sodium, what happens to the oxygen, to the hydrogen, you know, in terms of charges and all of this. So, you know, it's a good idea to get the basics right first before going on and, and talking more about the, the advanced stuff. Absolutely. Really is. Um, and those of you that are hoping to take your science further, if you go on to um, your separates so and you learn about C5, what you'll do is you'll do this method a step further by working out the concentration of this so, um, of this acid. Okay, so that's how you, by working out how many um, particular moles you've got by the volume that you've used. So that's why then you do separate science when you get to C5. Brilliant. Well, I think we've covered as much as we can possibly cover up in plant titrations, and we hope that we haven't bored you and that we've tried to just inspire you a little bit more just to come and have a go at the titration, you know, if you come across it during the practical or if you need to just find a little bit more out about it. So we hope that it's helped and we will perhaps see people around in lesson time. Good luck with your titration.